Hello, Snack Pack. Welcome back to Travel Snacks. I'm Allison, and welcome to the live stream. Uh, Travel Snacks is all about traveling and eating good food and being resourceful and being kind to one another. And thank you, YouTube, for letting me know I'm live. And maybe living an alternative lifestyle. You want to live in a van, a car, a truck, a tent, an RV? I don't know. But you don't have to live a traditional, you know, apartment or house. And we're all here for all that. So if you are thinking about living an alternative lifestyle, then welcome to Travel Snacks. All right. So let me read this and then we'll get to pop in about what's happening. Grant's in the house and Robbie's in the house. Those are two awesome, incredible, wonderful moderators who have been around for quite a while. So if you have any questions that I don't get to, I'm sure one of them can answer it. Also, they're here to keep everybody in line. So don't get crazy. <laughs> um, hey, Mountain Wonder. And Rebecca's in the house, Nelson. And it's so good to see you as well. Um, yes, uh, HD, H, what? HDJ, bless me, turkey burger and tater tots. Oh, yum. Hey, Kenneth. Um, that sounds so good right now. Tater tots. I just went to the store to get some stuff. Um, and I'm going to be talking about unexpected things that keep seem to be happening to me. I don't even know if that made sense. Uh, I'm also on very limited sleep. So I'm sure you can tell by looking at my eyes <laughs> that... I am maybe not a hundred percent there mentally because I'm so tired. Um, hey Denise, how are you? Um, so yes, as Grant said, this room may look familiar to you guys. And for those of you guys that have been following Travel Snacks for a while, you'll know that this is one of the bedrooms in my parents' house. And you're probably like, what? I'm even like, what? Because I was in Idaho on the last live stream and I was in a beautiful location at the lake. I had just put like a post up saying, it's a full circle moment. I've just finally made it back to Idaho. I've been wanting to go to Idaho forever. Uh, I wanted to explore like the whole of Idaho and spend the next month or two just, you know, enjoying the Northern mountain states and just being, you know, just enveloped in that cool coolness up there and maybe dip my toe into Washington and Oregon and just really enjoy the mountain states. And I was feeling like real happy about that. And then on Monday, I got a call that was upsetting. And the unfortunate thing is that I can't really share <laughs> any details with you guys, but it's uh, a delicate, sensitive situation regarding some family members. Uh, and that's all I can really say because it's um, not really something for me to share um, publicly. Uh, it was upsetting enough for me to immediately hang up and jump in the car and or jump in the van and drive for the next two days back to California. Um, it's truly unfortunate because I was traveling with my friend Adriana, which is uh, many roads, no rules. And uh, she's a wonderful uh, friend, YouTuber, uh, traveler, nomad friend. And we were, you know, loosely traveling together you know, so that we wouldn't have to just be alone all the time. And it was really working out pretty well. Um, we were just finally like getting on to like, you know, working how everything's gonna, you know, be planned out and where we're kind of gonna go loosely. And just, you know, when you first start traveling with somebody, you have to work the kinks out because you've never traveled with somebody before. Um, so it was really going well. We finally made it to Idaho. We were figuring out places to go like for keeping cool and for 4th of July. And I just 
had to call her because we were actually that day we were parked separately. She was back by the lake and I was parked more in the city getting some stuff done. And so I just called her crying and I was like, I got to go. I got to go back to California. And she's like, oh, my gosh. Um, so. Yeah, so I just jumped in and it was already like 8 p.m. in Idaho. And so I just jumped on the road and drove for a couple hours. Um, let me read some comments and then I'll continue on. Um, yes, Grant, you definitely know this room uh, just by being on these live streams. Hey, Mordan, a free food. Uh, hey, Crystal, how are you? Uh, Grant says, it's a personal matter and there's no need to share publicly. Thank you very much. I appreciate that very, very much. If I could share it, I would. Maybe, maybe not, but it's just too delicate of a situation. So I don't want to share that, um, but I appreciate the support. Um, hey, Wild and Free, how are you? Debbie Lee, thank you. God will take care of it. We'll keep, thank you very much. Um, so basically I did like a couple hours that night because I didn't want to just like drive you know, tired because it was already getting late in the day. So I think I made it to Lewiston, Idaho. It's all a blur, to be honest. Uh, I think I got to Lewiston, Idaho, just rolled up into like a Holiday Inn Express parking lot, uh, ate some cereal because I hadn't eaten a uh, bowl of cereal and just like went to sleep. Um, the next day, I think I drove like... 10 or 12 hours and I made it to where was I Wells Nevada Wells Nevada it's a very small place it's not even a big place but they did have like uh I don't even know maybe it was like a Holiday Inn or a Hampton Inn or some kind of hotel basically just like one hotel uh and I parked there um and that that day that night uh, I was just so tired already. I like had to drink half of a five hour energy. Cause I guess you're not supposed to drink the whole thing, which I didn't know that, but, uh, I drank half of one and just, I had two coffees and I just kept driving because I didn't really realize how far it was, but it was like coming from, um, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho back to the lower Southern desert of California is like a 21 hour drive. So it was not just like a quick little hop, skip and jump to get back. So I made it to Wells, Nevada. I just parked there for the night. And then the next morning I got up at, um, 8 AM, I think, and got on the road again. Um, about an hour in, I stopped for a coffee in, um, Ellie, Eli, Ely, Nevada, which I'd been to before on my way up uh, out of California, which they have a really cool coffee place, an espresso place. Um, it's like a flower shop and an espresso place. So it's really kind of cool. So I stopped in there. Um, and the bummer part of all this is that my van was doing pretty well, but then it wasn't. And it uh, stopped a few times again like it just decelerated and then I would just have to get off, like get on the side of the freeway or highway or road or whatever I was on and just wait it out. So along with just trying to drive and get back, my van was just like not having it. So there is definitely something wrong with the van there. I don't know what it is, but I, I would bet a 5,000 fake dollars. It has something to do with the fuel system. It's, it's almost like at a certain point, like after a, like maybe four or five hours of driving, it's almost like the fuel is not getting to something. It's not going through. I'm just making that up because that's just the way it feels. One At one point, I wasn't even on cruise control and the gas pedal just went down by itself. Like it was a ghost in there. And because I went, I like took my foot off the gas because we were, I was going like a, like a downhill. And when I went to put my, foot on the gas again, it was all the way pressed down. So I don't know what's happening. And there'd be times where it would like speed up and slow down on its own. I don't know. The van is like doing its own thing. I think it's, I think Simon has a mind of his own at this point. He's got a hundred thousand miles and he's like, you know, what? I got this. It's a little off-putting. So 
there was a couple times that I had to just stop. Like there was like, once I got a little bit past Las Vegas, I just stopped at a Starbucks parking lot and just parked and got another coffee and just sat there for a while. Um, and that's like about four hours from my parents' house. Uh, so it was just like a total bummer, like trying to drive back. Um, and then I got to my parents' house last night about six o'clock. Um, and I'm just burnt out. <laughs> I'm just tired. Um, there's different, there was like a different time zone because I think Coeur d'Alene is on one time zone, but like at a certain point in Idaho, you go to like a mountain time zone. And then of course, California is on Pacific time. So they always say like, if you're traveling that you should give like yourself a day of rest, almost like a jet lag feeling, um, one day per time zone that you go through. Um, so I didn't, I, I slept in my van. I'm going to continue to sleep in my van. Um, I slept in my van last night and even though like, I know I'm in a safe place where my parents live, my brain was still like not fully there. So I just kept waking up, like looking out the window and I'm like, Oh, I'm here. <laughs> it's like so weird. So it's just a weird, weird feeling. Um, let's see. Oops. Let me scroll back. Kenneth says, whatever you and your closest people are going through, Jesus is with you. And one thing I know about you is that you spread light wherever you... Thank you so much, Kenneth. That is so sweet. Oh, thank you, Grant, for posting those links. I appreciate that very, very much. Hey, Roderick, how are you? Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Robbie, for posting that. Hey, Amy Cook is in the house. And Deb, I don't know if it's the fuel pump, Deb, because... I got it looked at back in March uh, by a mechanic and because I had this problem last year and he said that everything was fixed, but clearly it's not fixed. The check engine lights on and I was about to go buy one of those. Um, I forget what they're called. I have it written down, but it's like one of those meters where you can check the codes and stuff. Uh, but now I just came back. So now everything's changed. Uh, so, but the good news is now I can take it back to the mechanic who said he fixed it so that he can, look at it again and he better not charge because he didn't fix it. So I'm um, more down gonna have to keep blocking that. Oh, okay. Let's see. Um, let's see. Hey, Courtney, how are you? I'm pretty good. Did the RPMs go? Uh, yeah, at times it did. It, it was like so weird. It was just like a weird like sometimes it would accelerate on its own and then there are times where it would just decelerate hundred percent. So I'd have to pull off on the side of the road. Like, and then like when you drive, it's like, you know, when you're driving you put your foot on the gas and there's times where you got to like break and, you know, at different times, especially if you're coming down a hill. And there would be times where if I would like take my foot off the gas and then go to put my foot on the gas again, there would be no gas to be had. It would just like almost like not be available but then I would just take my foot off and I would tap it a little bit and then it would go it, like almost like that weird shifting, like, you know, jutting forward. It was just like, just hit or miss. I don't even know. Oh yeah. The OBD sensor, Courtney. Yes. That's the thing I was going to get. Hey, Meredith. Um, I owned a Yukon that did the same sort of thing. It was a fuel pump. I mean, it seems like a fuel pump. I don't know. Yes. Please hit the like button if you're on here. Cause that would be awesome. Well done for you. Getting back home also might be a good excuse to run a full tomb on it. Yeah. And I had just had my van like hundred hundred percent service before I left back in March. Um, but yes, I think this will be a good time to get some stuff done. Roderick says, I was going to say fuel pump, check the fuel filter as well. Yes. Um, let's see. Google what could go wrong with your vehicle at its current. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Hey, Maria from Sweden. Awesome. Um, could it be like a vapor lock? I don't know, Carol. I know that I had supposedly my evap canister sensor replaced right before I left, uh, because that was the code that was showing, um, you know, when you plug it in, but then that 
check engine light came on again and showed that same code. So I do want to take it back to the, the mechanic that said he replaced that. Hey, Angel Wings. Uh, have you cleaned fuel injectors? They sell in Edip. I don't know. I did end up adding that um, seafoam stuff. Uh, I put half of it in, um, I don't know when, a few days ago. And then I put the other half in when I stopped at that Starbucks in like right out of Las Vegas. Because my dad's like, just put the whole thing, put the rest of it in to see what happens. But I don't know. Uh, please, no, I don't want it to be my transmission. I don't think so. I think it really does have something to do with the fuel, something to do with the fuel, because it's it feels like that. Uh, Courtney, my mom and dad are doing great. Um, yeah, they're doing pretty good. They've just been, you know, going to a lot of doctor's appointments. My mom has a lot of doctor's appointment follow ups uh, just because of her brain bleed and because of like she has, uh, you know, stuff with her heart and stuff. And so but yeah, they're doing they're doing pretty good. So that's a blessing. Oh, thank you, Roderick. I think, thank you. That's so sweet. Hey, Cheryl's in the house. How are you? Um, also, what was I going to tell you guys? Another thing. Um, oh, so here's like the bummer is like, I want to say this in a, a delicate way, but you know, I love visiting my family. I love, um, you know, at times being in the desert, it's, it's very peaceful, uh, but I don't want to be here. It's like, I really, this is probably the worst time to be here because where my parents live in the desert is the straight desert. Like the temperatures are consistently like 115 degrees Fahrenheit and higher. It's so, so hot. So I'm about to have the hottest girl summer of all. It's going to be like, I don't know when I'm going to be able to leave this area because of the stuff that's going on. I don't know. Um, but I will be still in my van. Um, maybe during the day I'll be doing other things like, you know, all the stuff I got to take care of with the situation. Um, I'll still be making videos. I'll still be doing live streams. Um, and this will be a good test of my Zero Breeze AC. Uh, I'll give you guys updates on that. Uh, during the night, it's it's okay. Like I slept in the van, it was hot, but it wasn't terrible. Um, but this is the worst time to be in the desert. So it'll be a real test and it's really, you know, gives you a gratitude because some people literally don't have other choices. You know, like I, if I get too hot, I can come into my parents' house. Um, I personally just like to stay in my van because it's my home and I have all my stuff in there. Um, the other benefit is that I can take showers in my parents' house instead of, there's no planet fitness where my parents live. The closest planet fitness is about 40 ish, 45 minutes away. So that's a blessing. Um, so I wanted to tell you guys that it is so interesting to me because this whole journey, every time I have gone out, you know, to go do this full-time nomad living situation, even starting with my car all the way until now, for some reason, I continue to get called back to California and specifically to this area that I don't want to be in. And, you know, when I was living in my car, uh, I got, had to come back to California because of the pandemic, uh, there was no other options. Um, and then last year when I went to the East coast, I had health problems. So I had to come back for that and go to physical therapy and go to the hospital and go to the doctors and go to all the things. And then when I was about to leave California this year, my mom went into the hospital and I also got COVID. Uh, and so once I left in March, I was planning to be gone for like months at a time. Uh, and just continue to live the nomad life. And as you guys saw on the last live stream, I was in the place I wanted to be and, you know, exploring and, you know, getting, getting that whole thing. And, you know, what I wanted to make this, this live stream really is that I had a lot of time to think driving on the road 
for those 20 plus hours. And I just allowed myself to feel whatever I was feeling because there's no need to try to stuff it down and be like, oh, this is just so great and happy because the reality is my brain is saying, no, I don't want to do this. I don't want to be there. I want to be where I want to be. That's why I'm a nomad. But, you know, I went through my little anger and went through my upsetness, went through my sadness, went through all the feelings. And then I just came to this point where, number one, I'm full dependence on God. This is happening for whatever reason that I don't know. But I have to change my perspective. And that's an encouragement for anybody that is going through a lot because I've, I've been hearing from so many people that that's going through like not the same thing as me, but similar. I keep hearing people saying, okay, I'm doing this. And then this happens to me. And I try to do this and this happens, or, you know, I get a little money and then I have to pay this bill or I, I go, you know, to get an apartment and it's gone or, um, you know, I was kicked out of my apartment or I got so many medical bills or like the list is going on and on and on. And, and sometimes you just literally cannot change it. You just, sometimes you just can't change the circumstance <laughs> as hard as you try. It's like, personally in my situation, I feel like I am stuck in like literal hotel, California. It won't let me leave. You can check in, but you can't check out. <laughs> I don't know what the, I don't know what the issue is. So, you know, the last few hours driving here, I was just like, you better change your attitude, girl, because it's something you got to deal with. And so I prayed for patience, but I actually asked God specifically, Hey God, maybe don't like give me opportunities to be patient. Cause I don't know if you've guys heard of that to where when you pray for something, God will give you a way to practice that thing. I'm like, I don't want to practice patience. I just need you to help me to be patient because this is a situation that I don't want to be in. Um, and the other thing is when you go through a situation, like what I'm going through right now, I need to get my mind off of what I don't want and focus on what I do want. And what I do want is to get through the situation and then move on and also be, um, be open to surprises and, and wonderful things along the way, because all I can see in my visuals right now is things that I don't want, but things during this time may turn out better than I could ever imagine. And also there could be some things that happens while I'm here that I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so there's really no need for me to be like stewing and like being upset because it's just here. Like I have to be here, you know? Um, so I'm just going to look at it as like the roller coaster of life, you know, sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down and I don't even want to look at it as like down, like terribly, like depressing down. Just, it's just like a down moment that I didn't choose, but Hey, it's just, this is just what's happening. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, auto parts store lets you scan the codes for yes fire you know what I actually did that and um, I forget where I was but I went to AutoZone and they checked it and that's how I knew that they confirmed that it was the code for the evap canister sensor hey Anthony uh, blessings from Ireland from a Maltese lad oh thank you for being here more done. I heard good and bad on the seafoam product. So did I. I heard people saying don't do it. And some people were saying do it. So I ended up just doing it. And nothing really happened. Hey, Element for Life. Yo, yo, yo from Canada. Awesome. Oh, I also checked to see once I was in Idaho, I checked to see if I could go into Canada and they're still not letting um, unvaccinated people in. So I can't go to Canada. Well, I can't go now anyways, because I'm not close up there anymore. But even when I was up there, I was really trying to see if I could get up there, but I can't. So that's a bummer. Um, Crystal says, maybe a batch of bad gas had some particles in it and gas filter is clogging up. That happened to me before on my 1999 Chevy Suburban. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Oh, the gas prices, Angel Wings. So 
I've probably spent a good $500 trying to get back because the gas prices were oh, always, always over $5 everywhere I stopped along the journey, all the way down from Idaho to California. And my parents live in a small town and all the gas stations here are six over $6 a gallon. That's, I don't even know. I, I just, I, I don't, I don't want that, but Hey, it just is what it is. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Hey, Cheryl, I'm in the desert as well. I feel for you, my friend. Oh my gosh. So you know this heat. Hey, Mark, how are you? Thank you for being here. Hey, Christine. Thank you, Kenneth. Hey, Judith. People have remind, people have to remind me regularly that God's plans don't always align with my plans. Uh, go are exactly uh, where you're meant to be. Yes. I agree. Definitely. It's doesn't, it's not about my plans. It's, it's about God's path for me. And I always pray, like, I always pray, you know, God, you know, put me on your path, the path that you want for me. And clearly he did. And it doesn't feel like the path I want to be on, but it doesn't matter because there's not just me involved. There's other people involved. Um, you know, and this is a time to be a blessing for other people. Hey, Carolina. How are you? Courtney says, don't feel bad. You're not the only one. I was supposed to start living in my car next month. And lo and behold, somebody hits me. And now I'm driving a rental for a time. I'm telling you, I've, and I'm sorry to hear that. Truly sorry to hear that. It really does seem like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's just the people I know. But it feels like um, people are going through 10 times more than they ever did in the time of my living in this world people used to have like more of a time that they would be steady and then there'd be like bumps in the road and I've just been hearing from so many people that there's like like a little bit of going then a bump then a little going then a bump and just bumps like like speed bumps just like so many and it's hard for people to catch their breath and that's why I want to be an encouragement to everybody you know on travel snacks and anyone that I can talk to because I'm going through it too, but you know, I just, I want to make sure that we all can like pray for each other, love each other, support each other, and just know that we're not alone. You know, everyone's going through some stuff and just like really try to be there for each other. Cause it's just going to get very hard. Hey, Kenny from East Texas. Ooh, I bet it's hot there. Hey, Tracy, the house. How are you, Tracy? Uh, let's see. Mark, I prayed one time for patience and it was terrible. He really gave it to me. I told my pastor that I'll never pray for patience. So here, yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to be in situations where I need to, to practice patience, but it's not my choice. Peppermint Swirl. I love that name. A girl, it's so hot. Stay hot. Oh, yes. I have my, I'm just drinking from like the glasses on my parents' house, but I do need to bring my, you know, my 40 ounce water in here so that I could, you know, make sure I stay hydrated because, um, yeah, if, if you don't drink a lot of water in the desert, you're really gonna be in a bad situation. I think personally, let me drink this. I was thinking about this and, you know, everybody that I have talked to, um, about like, you know, the COVIDs and stuff like that. Like I had it really bad, but I didn't have the traditional, like where people are like, um, have lung problems and stuff like that. I really personally think that my COVIDs was so bad, like so extremely bad because I think I was already dehydrated and that made it 10 times worse. So that's why I'm so strong on everybody, like trying to stay hydrated and drink more water. And I'm glad that you guys are like reminding me and reminding each other because if you are dehydrated and you get any kind of sickness, cold, flu, any, like any, any sickness, dehydration will like take your body down real bad. Miroslav, I know I usually don't eat snacks on the live streams because I don't know if people want to hear me like crunching, you know, that's like more of an like ASMR channel or mukbang channel. Um, I did eat a couple times when I 
excuse me, when I did the uh, unboxing of the snacks that Grant sent me, uh, him and his wife, they sent me Canadian snacks. Uh, I did eat on the live stream on that one. And there's been, I think, a couple other times where I might have had a few things on here. Um, is that something you guys would want to see? Like, because I can eat all the time, honestly. Like, I could, you know. But I don't know, because then I'd have to, like, be eating. And then I don't want to eat with my, or talk with my mouth full, you know, chomps away. It'd be different if I had somebody on with me. But to carry the whole live stream and, and be eating and talk, try to talk at the same time, I don't know. But you guys could let me know if that's something you guys want to see. Like maybe I could do, you know, one or two live streams where I talk about snacks. I don't know. Um, Cheryl, God answers our prayers in his way, not in ours. He has a plan. Amen, Cheryl. That's so true. Not wonder. God uses these things to strengthen and mold you. For sure. For sure. I totally 100% agree. Robbie, everything happens for a reason. And keeping your faith is like a promise that one day you will understand the plan. Yes, exactly. Tracy, $50. Oh, <clears throat> thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Let me give you a shout out. Holy moly. Thank you so, so much. Let me turn this on. Whoa. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy, so much. You are so sweet and a blessing. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, Christine, I'm doing an ambulance build, telling my husband I'm just going to travel a bit, a bit being forever. I mean, that's how I feel too. I feel like, a, like I just want to travel and travel and travel and travel. Um, and, you know, sometimes it just doesn't it just doesn't work that way. Uh, also, I'm just getting a notice. So let me just check this. Oh, Gil Gilberto sent $10. Thank you so much, Gilberto. I appreciate that, truly. Thank you so, so much. Let me just check this. Um... Oh, Douglas Fields sent $20 for snacks. Thank you so, so much. Cause I just went to the store and bought some stuff, uh, to keep my, to keep me going on like a better eating, but I did grab, well, it's not really snacks. I, I did grab like a few like healthier choice snacks. Uh, so that will be very helpful, Douglas. So thank you very much on that. Uh, let's give you... Thank you so much. Let me just make sure because I'm seeing some things coming through here. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. That's the same message uh, about Gilberto sent it on Cash App. So thank you very much on that. Um, so another thing that, well, let me read these comments and then I'll tell you the next thing. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Angel Weens. I remember that video when you mentioned the my truth stuff. Thank you for saying that. So tired of hearing people say that. Well, my truth is, lol, there's only one truth. God's truth, the truth. Factuals, factuals. Yeah, I, I some things that people say really chaps my hide. I, I still try to like be patient and try to be like understanding of the way people are. But when people are like, it's just my truth. It's I'm like, it, it's really not your truth. There's another word for it. It's called an opinion. And it's okay to say opinion. It's just your opinion. We all have an opinion. Don't know hype, yes. Thank you so much, Tracy. Yes, God will provide for sure. Yes. Boomerang fund, let's go. Yes. Beyond comfort travel adventures. There is no growth without testing. Oh, I love that. Practice is part of the process. So God is not going to let you slide from start to finish without the processes that get you to the finish line. Amen. I love that. It's true. It is so true. And I'm going to talk about something similar to what you're saying in just a second. Um, God, God tests heavily the ones that trust him more. I know I got the stuff kicked out of me in the past year. Most wouldn't believe the stuff, but praise the Lord. It's his planet. Mind. That's again, is so true. Like it's so funny because there's times where people will be like, why, why are you still like 
joyful or happy is that because the Lord gave me breath, like I'm still here, you know, it's not the worst. There's people that got all kinds of like way trillion time worse things than me. Uh, Crystal says over $6 a gallon. That's crazy. It's actually dropping here. Oh, oh, really? Slowly in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas. 403. Okay, dad, yeah, that is definitely lower. Definitely lower. Oh my gosh. Um, I really hope it does start getting lower in places everywhere. Uh, let's see. Shannon. Hey, Shannon. Um, thank you for being here and telling us what you are going through. It helps me to feel better. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad. Uh, this is why I love doing the live streams because when I'm going through stuff, I want to like, you know, share and encourage because I know we're all going through stuff and it feels better to, to go through stuff together. Hey, Jimmy, praying for you. Good things are going to happen for you. Thank you. Stay strong and love watching. All your thank you so much, Jimmy. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Thank you, Judith. M. McLaughlin, I don't know if it's just a matter of perception, but it does feel that there's more resistance lately to get anything done. That's what I feel. Like, I, I feel that everything that I've been doing, like trying to make phone calls or order stuff or whatever. Oh, I got to tell you guys. Okay, so um, remember I tried to... <laughs> Uh, I just have to laugh. Remember I tried to order my stuff um, from Bozeman, Montana, and the postal person wouldn't let me get it. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the really quick story is I ordered a few things from Amazon. I shipped it to a post office with general delivery. I went to go pick it up when it was ready and they wouldn't let me get it because they were like, oh, we got to sort through it and you're gonna have to come back tomorrow. And I was leaving and blah, blah, blah. So I ended up having to abandon my things. It's my water alarm. So I ended up having to just leave that package in uh, Bozeman. The heck. Uh, so that was a package that I left. So then I reordered those same four things to Coeur d'Alene. Because I was like, okay, well, I know I'm going to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So I reordered those same four things. And the day that I got the phone call that I needed to, to come back to California uh, was the day that my stuff got delivered. And I was already two hours driving before it hit me. And I was like, my stuff is sitting in an Amazon locker in Coeur d'Alene <laughs> and I'm not going to drive back. <laughs> so, um, so now my stuff that I tried to order the same four items is there. So what happens if you guys don't know with the Amazon locker is if you don't claim the stuff, they just, they wait three days and then they just ship it back and give you a refund. So there's, I'm not going to like miss anything out. So now I just got to my parents yesterday. And so today I reordered those same four things, uh, to be delivered here to my parents' house. So hopefully nothing happens because I've been trying to order these same few things. I also ordered a few other things too. Um, I just thought that was so funny because I feel bad because I'm not, I don't want to be that person that, you know, keeps ordering stuff and I'm just not able to pick it up, but it is just one of those situations that like just couldn't work out. But that's like one of the things I was saying about resistance, like things like just keep happening weird. Cheryl says, I think that our world has changed so vastly that the issues are greater and more often it seems. I think you're right. I think so. Like so many things are so more, like feels more stressful, like more, more of like the stakes are higher for some reason or not stakes are higher, but just, it feels more heavy, you know? Um, Christine, Toronto, Canada, gas is 205 a liter times four to make 820 a gallon. That's gross. Uh, Kenny says it was 104 today. I wonder how hot it is where I am. Oh, Crystal sent me $10 for snacks or coffee. Thank you so much, Crystal. Let me give you a shout out. Let's give you, I'll give you a series of things. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Crystal sent $10 on cash app. Thank you so, so much. The little, wait, where is it? This little thing right there. That's my cash app. If anybody wants to do a donation, travel snacks. Uh, 
Oh, I was checking the weather. Let's see. Um, well, it's 93 right now, but I know it was hotter earlier. Actually, it's not going to be like the worst where my parents live. Uh, it's going to be um, 93 tomorrow, 91 on Saturday, and then Sunday is going to be a cool 88 and Monday as well. Okay, but next Friday and on, it's going to be over. It's going to be 100. I don't want it. Gross. Um, I'm afraid to pray for patience. I know. I know. I like, I don't want to give God any directives, but I was also like, maybe don't like, like, I don't want to have situations where I have to practice the patience. I need, I need, I need you to just drop some, some patience into me and like, let it swirl around. And then I'm just like automatically like, Oh, okay. Yes. I, under I need, I need to just get some patience, like sprinkle it in Tracy. Hey, Allison, I am doing okay. Today is better day. Okay. Good, 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 good. AG Robbie says vodka alarm. You know, if I was a drinker, this would be the time that I would start day drinking, to be honest, but I don't drink or smoke or do any other drugs. But I, I do understand why people do it, but don't do it. If you don't, don't, yeah, don't, don't take that path. I'm just joking, but don't take that path. If you're going through stuff, try to stay off of those things because it's not going to resolve anything. It's really not. 103 in Austin. Oof. Hey, PBR Doug. It's been a while, definitely. It's good to see you here and just wanted to wish you well. Thank you so, so much. Kenneth says, you don't have to figure it all out at once. Sometimes it's one step at Thank you, Kenneth. That is actually like such a breath of fresh air to hear that. You know, sometimes we forget that like everything doesn't have to be done right this minute. So I really appreciate that. <clears throat> H.E.J., when I had COVID, I developed a bad rasping cough that lasted for about four months. Yes. Uh, one good new piece of news is that my hair has stopped falling out. Um, it stopped falling out about a month ago. So now when I take a shower and pick out my hair or brush my hair, it's very little like it was before any of this happened. So if anyone's struggling with hair loss, uh, mine did stop. I still have the problem with smell. Um, and I finally did reach out to my doctor. So I'm waiting to find out what's like, if there's anything that could be done. Um, cause I've been trying to do like the smell stuff, smell tests, re retraining, but it's like not really working. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Robbie says, does anyone like Brussels sprouts? I do like Brussels sprouts. I like to air fry them with a little garlic and salt and then drizzle it with balsamic glaze. And it's really good. Uh, Christine says, eat steamed veggies. They are quiet. That's true. That's true. That's a quiet quiet thing to eat. Grant says, maybe one day I'll join you on the live stream while you eat. Yes, that would be fun. I definitely would do that. Then you can talk while I chomp on all the stuff. And Tracy says, I love the hallelujah. Yes. So generous, Tracy. Thank you so, so much. Hey, Marianne. Um, Daisy Lee, uh, please, please pray for my husband. Stage four Mantle cell lymphoma, incurable, but remission is possible. Bless you all. Okay. Everybody say a prayer for Daisy Lee's husband, um, just for a healing touch and comfort for the family and everyone that's, you know, helping out and everything. Margie says, thank you for not eating life. Uh, hey, JJ. So glad I caught you live. Whenever I have a hard time, I take a step back and see what I'm supposed to learn. Then I can be on the roadblock. See beyond the road. See beyond the roadblock. Definitely not easy. I wanted my van built by seven one twenty two. JJ, I I fully love that, and I fully understand because for those of you that that know or don't know, um, when I was building my van, I thought it was going to take two months total, and it took six months, and I was just like stressed to the max. Um, so yes, sometimes you just have to take the bigger picture and be like, okay, this is where I'm at. Um, let's see, Roderick, Allison, I've been a nomad for three years. I totally understand, but I've learned it. It's all normal. The ups and downs, it does build character. It made me embrace the pain when I did that. Everything got better. Yes. One of the things is like to let go of the outcome. 
that is something that I say to, to people. And I say it to myself, like along the drive back, I kept saying when I would get riled up in my head, I would just be like, okay, you need to let go of the outcome there. You're d trying to get this outcome and it may not be the outcome. It may be a fully different outcome. So you need to let go of whatever you expect to have happen uh, and just embrace it. JJ says, I haven't been able to afford what I want. I, I totally get that. Thank you, Kenneth. Uh, you have been a blessing for me. You were, when you were in your car, what a joy you have been. Thank you so, so much. That is so sweet. Uh, let's see. Tracy Weeks says, Brussels sprouts are devil's food. <laughs> hey, Hope is in the house. How are you? Meredith says, I hope the best for you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It's a great one. Thank you so much, Meredith, for the reminder. So, so true. So, so true. Roderick, you are amazing, Allison. You have a purpose. Chosen ones are built for the pain. You have great. Thank you so much, Roderick. That is so sweet. Rick's Gypsy. Hey, I get through adversity by focusing on troubles I don't have instead of what I do have. That is awesome. I love that. Yes. There's so many more things that could be like the worst things. And you're right. Hey, Thomas, how are you? Mountain Wanderer likes Brussels sprouts. JJ, Brussels sprouts, tomato, onion, avocado spices. Ooh, yum. Robbie, Robbie says, I found out in some places lettuce is out of stock and Taco Bell in those areas are using chopped cabbage. Cabbage. I like cabbage and lettuce, but you don't replace cabbage in Taco Bell. That's not a thing. I don't want that. Uh, P.S. When I was driving back, uh, my good eating went out the window because I was just like trying to like get back. So I would just stop and grab something. I stopped at a Taco Bell, placed my order on the app. And I, again, this is the second time this has happened. I went up to the door to go in to get my pre-ordered Taco Bell and the door was locked. And then the sign says drive through only. And I'm like, bro, I can't go through the drive through. Your thing is too low. So I called them and I was like, Hey, I'm outside of your door. I have a mobile order and I can't go through the drive through Can someone bring it out? And they're like, are you at the door right now? Like she was pissed. And I was like, yeah, like if you're don't, like, if you allow people to order on the app, then you need to like either shut the app down so people can't order or like have an, I don't know. Cause no. And that's not the only restaurant. I went to a Qdoba, like I forget when, and they, and they had a note on their door. Dining room's no longer open. You have to place a mobile order. Like it's a whole thing. There's so much like there's short staff everywhere and people are having to close their dining areas in this whole America. Um, let's see. Hey, Jeff, Allison doing okay. I have surgery coming up. Have to take two day COVID test on the fifth and surgery on the seventh on an elbow that went wrong. Plastic surgeon on this fix, praying to God for fix. Yes. Yes. Prayers to Jeff for upcoming surgery. Grant, it's only 74. That sounds delightful. Going to be 104 next week, says Crystal with a throwing up face. That's how I feel. Hey, Waylon, how are you? Tracy says it's winter here, cold and wet in Melbourne, not a good weather day. So I'm baking and cooking. Ooh, I want baked cookies, even though it's hot. Uh, HGJ, Allison, you have been through hard times and you got through all of them. I don't want to sound cliche, but history dictates that you have what it takes to get through this. Thank you so much. I appreciate that message. Whenever I have hard challenges, I remember that I have been through a lot worse before. I always come out winning on the end. Factuals. That is so true. You're right about that. I've done this before and I can do it again. Parker, John, I got cut off, but good luck finding a good mechanic to visit. Thank you so much. Thank you so very much. Prayers. Let's go. Yes. Thank you for sharing and asking for prayers. Yes. Cheryl says, I do drink, but oops, I do drink, but I tend, I, but I don't tend to do it when I have issues because I find it just gets in the way of solving issues. That's true. 
Uh, oh, yes. God bless you, Daisy. Sam Sneed, I pray for the grace you need for each day, my girl. God bless. Thank you. Let's see. Thank you, Grant, for posting that, those links. Tracy says, they do in Melbourne. It was a gross Taco Bell lettuce. It's $12 a head, but I'd rather no lettuce on my taco than cabbage. <laughs> well, so, you know, like whenever I would have like, um, like fish tacos, you know, they do put cabbage on there because that's a different type of a taco. But like if you're having a meat taco or like a chicken taco, I don't know if that cabbage is the right way to go. And actually Taco Bell is not the right way to have cabbage. Like Taco Bell, like tacos and burritos and stuff is a whole different type of Mexican food. It's not, it doesn't lend itself well to cabbage. That's not the right combination. Hey, Brenda Lee, how are you? Kenneth says, uh, my hair stopped falling out too just as soon as I went embalmed. <laughs> oh no. Angel says, to make it easier instead of having to type out. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, also, okay, so this is the last thing I want to say um, is that, you know, like I said, I had a lot of time to think and I was thinking that one of the things, well, there's a, there's a few things. There's a few things on my van that needs tending to. Um, there's one... Um, so my, my floor is laminate. It's the laminate planks. And for whatever reason, there's one that's like right in a, like a spot that's just like in the middle that somehow it, a piece like kind of broke off or not off, but like, I don't know, whatever it's, it's broken. And so whenever I step on it, it pushes the floor down in that area and it's like, it has to snap back into place every time. So that is a hassle because I looked up some YouTube videos and you have to drill out that piece and like replace it with another piece. And those pieces are here at my parents' house. So I don't know when I'll be able to do it because it's flipping hot, but I will probably have to replace that. So that's one thing I've been wanting to repaint my van again, it's really hot. So I don't know when, but I want to repaint my van and I want to, um, do like repaint it white, but then do like a big thick black strip at the bottom. Um, so that's something that's on my list. Um, and the other thing is I had, I had, like I told you guys I had started eating in my van, like 90% of the time, like actually, except for getting coffees out, I have been eating just in my van and cooking. So I'll probably be, you know, showing more of that on my videos um, of what I've been eating in the van. Um, and so I'm going to look at this. I'm going to turn it around that I will have to be here in the desert. So I'm going to, you know, just work on getting in shape. It's going to be like, like I said, a hot girl summer because it's going to be real hot, but also it's a good time for me to work on my health. So for anybody that's really trying to focus on, uh, maybe dropping some pounds or just getting more healthy in general. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to take advantage of this time and, you know, take more walks and eat better and just, you know, embrace being here. And during the time that I need to be here, you know, I can take that opportunity to um, think of some things that I can do instead of just what parts are bad. So, you know, if you're in a situation that you don't want to be in, like maybe look at another option that you have during that time. So that's what I'm going to do. So I went to the store right now. Um, everything's so expensive at the store. <sighs> like fruits and vegetables was so expensive. Just everything was so expensive. Um, I'm not sure. It just saddens me because I'm thinking like if people have little kids and you have to buy, you know, groceries every week for like a family of four or five or six or whatever, I don't know. Like they're going to have to eat, I don't know, spaghetti every night or noodles that's cheap because the grocery stores that I've been in, like across the U S they the prices have just really increased for just basic things. That's a little side rant. I'm still grateful that I have enough money to buy groceries and that I'm able to, you know, 
save money by not eating out so much. But, um, but anyways, um, give me a thumbs up. If you guys, if any of you guys are like thinking about working on your health or have been working on your health or trying to get some things together for your health during the summer. Let's see here. Tracy says, you're right, Allison. Taco Bell and raw cabbage is not good. I had a beef double cheese on, so cabbage was extra. But yeah, that doesn't, no, that doesn't go together. Uh, Lynn says, do you carry bear spray when you go hiking? You know what? I have not carried bit, uh, bear spray. I don't even own bear spray. Now, that was on my list of things to buy when I was up in Idaho because I was about to start doing more hiking in those areas. Um but I didn't even get to that because I had to leave. But um, my friend Adriana, who I was traveling with, she had bear spray. So we would usually go hiking together. Um, but I was on the verge of buying that so that, you know, and some other things. Uh, I think I am still going to buy some stuff just to like have it in my van. Uh, so this is a, another good thing is that I can have things delivered to my parents' house. So that's positive. Cheryl says, I wish that the world would give each other more grace and understanding, sending everyone joy and peace in your hearts. Thank you, Cheryl. And that is so true. I really am like going strong on saying that on this, on this channel because I've just seen how deflated people feel right now. And you can't have everybody feeling that way and not come together. Like we're all people that need encouragement. So do your best to like encourage each other. Thank you, Cheryl, for saying that. Oh, Waylon, coming through with a $50 super sticker. Thank you, Waylon, so much. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give you... He shoots. He scores! <laughs> that is a true blessing. Thank you so much, Waylon. That is very sweet. Uh, Meredith says, that's what I'm doing, working on being healthier and getting in better shape. I love it, Meredith. Angel says ramen. Sophie's up. Is it Sophie's up? Spiritual warfare. Yes. Crystal's given the thumbs up. Yes. HDJ. Groceries are possibly going up because of the price of fuel. I mean, that's for sure true. Mount Wanderers given the thumbs up. Trying to do better, but it's so hard. You know what? It's it is so hard. Um I think that the number one thing, which is also not that easy is to prepare. The more that I prepare, like if I make a, uh, like a, just a written, like, this is what I'm going to eat. So even if I don't prepare the things, but if I just write down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and this is what I'm going to eat. Sometimes I veer off of a little bit, but if I just look at the list and go, okay, it's Monday, you're having oatmeal, uh, you know, a bean burrito and a salad. Then I just know that that's what I'm going to grab or cook for that particular day. And it just takes the mental process of thinking through what I'm like, Hmm, well, I stuff have stuff in there for spaghetti, but I also have stuff in there for rice, but I also have, you don't have to think about it. If you have it in your mind and if you do prepare a little in advance, then that helps tremendously even more, but just the simple act of writing down what you're going to have every day. It really does has helped me at least. Um, Jeff says, yes, after surgery, getting back into shape. Yes. I love it. I love it. Grant says, I lost, oops, it scrolled up. I lost 40 pounds the last two years by changing my diet and walking and walking and walking every day. I love it. I love it. Love it. Yes. You don't have to do all the like Jane Fonda routines. You could just simply walk. You don't even have to do that much for exercise. Uh, if you could throw a little like weights in there or, you know, just body weight push-ups or like just basic things to strengthen yourself, that's great. But you don't have to do like the most. So I love that. Marianne says, yes, it's all about positive attitude. Grateful. The cup is half full. Facts. That's true. Courtney says, have you thought about painting your van black or having it painted? I would think it would help you retain stealth, especially if you're staying in neighbors overnight. So I have thought about that, Courtney, because I personally love the color navy blue um, or like a dark slate gray. The problem with that is that when you paint a dark color, it's like doesn't it's uh, makes the van hotter. So when you have a lighter co color vehicle, it at least helps for it to not be as hot. And for me, it's more difficult to live in a van when it's hot 
than it is cold. Cause I can pile on, you know, blankets and stuff when it's cold and I have a heater, but the heat is the thing that's like the, one of the most hardest things about van life. So any little degrees that I can keep it down, uh, I do that. And one of those things is keeping a light vehicle. Cause I personally don't know that I love having, like you said, a white vehicle that stands out. Uh, but it does help with the heat. Uh, Cheryl says summer is the wrong time for me to try to take, oops, take more walks and such because it's just too hot here. Fall and spring is better for, that's also true. I'm going to try to do more walking like in the first part of the day or in the very late part of the day. Uh, it's still hot here no matter what, but the better time is obviously early in the morning. So that might encourage me to get up a little earlier as well. I usually get up about seven, seven thirty, but you know, maybe I could get up a little earlier. I don't know. But yes, in, in these desert areas, it really is very hot, too hot to be walking. Um, yeah, it, it's just too hot. So I understand. Uh, Robbie says, I've started taking vitamins and eating Brussels sprouts. That's a great, great thing to do. Slickster for life was over engulfing on fast food and it caught up to me. Start Started the road back to cooking at home. Okay, good. So I'm not the only one. Yeah, I was eating a bunch of fast food, uh, you know. So I have cut back, like I haven't been having that except for on this drive back. Um, but I hadn't had that for like at least, you know, going on two weeks, I think. Angel says, I want to get in better shape. Awesome. Meredith says, I got to go for now. Bless. Thank you, Meredith, for being here. Good idea. I'm painting the van. Oops. A different color. Ooh, blue. Yes, I love blue. I look like a stick man on the road sign, but pregnant. <laughs> What about a medium blue or light blue? I mean, yeah, that could be a thing. Um, I do love blue. That's my favorite color. Tracy says, I am blessed to have food to cook and I am just limiting the junk sweet food to one day a week. It helps me stick to the health stuff. That's a great thing. Um, I've done that in the past and that does really help. So if you just take it off the table and just say you don't get sweets, like when you're a kid, you know, or when you're a parent to a kid and you're like, hey, you're, you know, um, you're not going to have sweets except on Saturday. And then the kid looks forward to it. Um, <clears throat> I've done that before with myself and just saying, you know what, you only get sweets on the weekend. Uh, and that's definitely helped. So the, all those little tips add up and helps you to cut back on those calories. <coughs> hey, be free. Brenda says, yes, my van is dark blue and it gets very hot. Yes. Evelyn says, I agree. Excess heat just drains you. I am normally very active in fall and winter, but hate doing anything in the summer heat. That is me. More than blue has no heat ratings. It's the most. Are you saying that blue um, doesn't get hotter. Um, Hey, Christina, greetings, travel snacks. Uh, maybe paint it camouflage and no, we'll see you. Oh, maybe. Jeremy says, I started walking and riding a bike. Also watching how much I eat. Yes. It's the little things. They all add up, you know, um, every little thing that you do, that's like, you know, even drinking more water, you know, instead of jumping into like getting chips or whatever, like if you have some water ahead of time, it limits the amount that you want to eat. Um, I know everybody's different. I'm a person that can literally eat like if I'm having a chocolate craving, I could eat like three or four M&Ms and I'm OK with like just getting that little taste. Um, and there's times where, you know, I'll bake chocolate chip cookies and I'll eat the whole container of it. So but for the most part, I am one of those people that can limit myself. But I know that it's not everybody can do that. So I hesitate to tell people just eat, just eat less because Sometimes it just doesn't work out, work out like that. And also I've still been sticking with my stretching for those of you that know that I had a back injury. So I do stretch like pretty much every day. And when I was on this drive, I didn't stretch that much, which kind of sucked, but um, definitely keep on. If you guys are stretching, keep stretching. Cause it does definitely help. Um, Morton says absorbent color of them all. I had to pick uh, I had a blue pickup and cargo trailer hot. Oh, dang. That sucks. Light silver gray would be a good color for your van, I think. What's funny is that my van was like already like a silver, goldy silver looking thing when I got it. And I was like, I hate this. It looks so ugly. And so then I <laughs> painted it white. Light gray, white, medium gray camo. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. 
I cook only hot tiger says I cook only with coconut sugar when making desserts or buy coconut bliss or Lily's chocolate bars with alternative sugar and don't gain anything from desserts. Now that's awesome. I also use coconut sugar as well. Uh, HGJ, my move from Atlanta, Georgia to Michigan really affected me. The winter here was hard on me. I stayed inside and lived off of fast food. The summer is allowing me to get out more and grow up. That's awesome. Yeah. Moving is hard when you're, you know, moving to a new location it definitely can do a number on your mentals. Oh, you're also seeing a difference in your budget. I mean, that's, that's great. Stephanie says me too. Money not lasting as long. Yes. Um, maybe insulate the roof with reflectix. Um, so my roof is already insulated with, um, have wool. So the roof is insulated. Um, and and then I have my solar panels on the top of the van. So there's that. Uh, Jeremy says, how much water do you drink? I'm finding myself drinking four to five bottles a day. Uh, I don't drink enough. Um, I had got into the habit of drinking two of my 40 ounce containers. So that was like 80 ounces a day, um, which is a lot for me. Like I know people say you're supposed to drink whatever this many gallons or this minute. I feel waterlogged when I drink too much water. Uh, it makes me feel sick. Like I'm going to throw up. So I drink as much as I feel I can drink, which I think I can drink, you know, two of those. So 80 ounces. Um, but I have gotten out of that habit and usually I drink only one of those a day now. So I really need to, especially now I need, I do need to try to drink more. Um, it's just like, it's just too hot here. <laughs> Brenda says, you talk about calories as I'm eating ice cream. Ice cream sounds so good right now because it's so hot. Uh, let's see. Oh, Robbie coming in with a five dollars. I am the proud uncle of seven brand new baby kittens. Yes, Robbie told us, me and Grant, uh, before the live stream that uh, he had seven kittens. And then Grant was like, I didn't even know you were pregnant. <laughs> I love a good joke and a good pun. So I thought that was funny. Thank you, Robbie, for the shout or for the five dollars. I'll give you a shout out. <laughs> Thank you, Robbie, for being always so generous and wonderful. Uh, yes, and I do love some baby kitties. I mean, who doesn't love baby kittens? I mean, I don't know. It's so sweet. Um, so that's awesome. Um, okay, so I think I am going to uh, go because I'm sitting in this room. There's no AC in this room, and I'm feeling the sweatles just, like, accumulating. Um so yeah, I'm going to go and sit out with my parents and I think I'm going to have, um, have you guys ever had udon noodles? They sell them at the grocery store. It's in a little, it's almost like ramen, but it's different type of noodles. It comes with a, a seasoning packet. Um, but I like to put, um, some vegetable broth in there, um, just to flavor it up a little bit. And then I dump in like half a bag of, um, stir fry veggies the one that has like the water chestnuts and the snap peas and stuff. Um, I know that sounds super hot. Like a, it's an udon noodle soup, but it's very filling and it doesn't have that many calories. Um, uh, and it's got a lot of veggies. Um, so I'm going to go out there and cool down a little bit first, get some more water. And then I think I'm going to make some soup. What time is it even? It's well here at six 30. Um, So it's time for dinner and yeah. So stay tuned. I am going to gather myself together, gather my thoughts, figure out the next videos that I'm going to be making because <laughs> everything's different now. Um, also, if there's any particular videos that you guys would like to see, any particular topics, uh, please send me a message. Uh, you can either DM me on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, you can put it in the comments of any video or you could send me an email and, uh, you know, then I can start making videos that you guys would like to see. I do have like the longest list in America of video ideas. So I'm not lacking for video ideas. It's more so that I, you know, there's been times where you guys have said, Hey, I'd like to uh, hear about this. And then I can make that video 
more quickly. So if there's anything that you guys are like thinking about in terms of nomad stuff or, you know, cooking in the van or like whatever the things, uh, let me know. And then I can put that on my list. Whoop, whoop. Oh, hot tiger. You do like the udon? Yeah, there's, it's so good. Cheryl says, have a great night, sweet Allison and chat. Send everyone positive thoughts and blessings and healing to all. Yes, I second that. Robbie says, hey, everyone, be safe and an amazing weekend in whatever part of the world you are. Yes. Have a great weekend. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I'm still, I'm going to try to come on live again soon and just keep you guys posted. Um, like what's happening in terms of like progress in my world. Um on Monday, Americans are going to get drunk. I mean, that's true. That's 4th of July or Independence Day. Uh, thank you, Grant, for posting those links. I appreciate very much. Night, night. I'll say a prayer for you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Lori, or Miles to go. Thank you for being here. Laura, I'd like to see the stealth in town boondocking locations. Okay, cool. That's a good one. Let me take it. I'm just going to take a picture of that comment so that um, I'll remember to write that on my list. Okay. That's a good one. And yeah, I can do that. Oh, July 4th is your dad's birthday. Oh, awesome. 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 All right. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, thank you guys for being so loving and supportive because, you know, when you do like content creation for a living, it's like, you never know how anything new or different is going to be received. So it's like, there's always that thing in the back of the mind, like, oh my gosh, are people going to be like, oh my gosh, you keep having all these problems and we're sick of it. And we're going to stop watching your channel. <laughs> like it could really do a number on you. So I, I appreciate just like the, the ultimate support, not only for me, but for each other, um, all the prayers and donations and love and everything. And it's going to be okay. We're all going to get through this. We're all going to like, you know, have one like happy days and, you know, times when we're not having happy days, but we're all together. And I really appreciate you guys uh, so, so much. And thank you for being here today and I'll catch up with you guys soon and keep praying for each other and encouraging each other. And until then, until next time, bye. Thank you guys. Also happy birthday to Grant's dad. <laughs> Thank you guys. I love you guys.